Yeah, hey everybody, and welcome! This is Divinity Original Sin 2. We are just about to get started on this. Oh, delightful little bit of a journey. So, as usual, my name is Tuki. Guys, let me know in the comments down below as soon as you can how does the audio sound, how everything sounds in relation to my voice, so on and so forth. But until then, let's go. to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. The plot thickens, I guess. Everything in this game is voiced, by the way. I'm so excited. Okay. So, it, it wasn't a dream after all. Well, that depends. Press L to view your journal. Okay, uh, my story so far, the Magisters. Though he is a sorcerer, wears a source collar, Bishop Alexander continues to lead the divine order. As he is the son of Lucian, and it is widely assumed he will succeed him as the next divine. Um, Lucian, the divine champion of the seven gods and savior of Revelon, is dead. He sacrificed himself to defeat the forces of the void leaving his son Alexander to preside over the next chapter of Revelon's history. But Lucian's sacrifice did not buy peace. Instead, the years that followed were plagued by the menace of Voidwoken. Okay. So he killed himself to defeat the forces of the Void, oh, but we're plagued by the menace of the Voidwoken. These beasts were drawn to Soros magic and left death and destruction in their wake. Very similar to the first game. I think, as I remember. Incapable of wielding the divine powers that his father had at his disposal, Alexander has resorted to harsher measures in order to stop the Void Woken. A great pogrom uh, program, probably, has commenced against sorcerers, those who show the most skill in the manipulation of source. Encouraged by his most trusted advisor, Dallas, Alexander has decreed that all sorcerers must be resettled in isolated colonies where they can pose a they cannot pose a threat to the rest of Revelon. One such colony is the ancient island stronghold of Fort Joy. It is this place that I, a captive sorcerer, am being sent. We are sorcerers being transported to Fort Joy, an ancient fortress on a remote island where magisters of the divine order have established an internment camp, okay? I am bound by a magical collar that cannot be removed. Okay, all right. Let's have a look. This is us, obviously. Um, right now, you can see we have that collar around our necks. Oh, C is sneaking, not character portrait. I is inventory. Oh, and character portrait. 
What do we have here? A minor healing potion, a resurrection scroll, resurrect a dead ally to 20% of its vitality. Okay. An oil flask creates a small oil Ooh, puddle with a two meter well backpack, is. seemingly this bottomless. Alright, there's nothing in there. Cool. We are currently wearing a threadbare gown, worn and torn and poorly darned. This shirt has seen better days, as well as threadbare pants. These shabby pants are standard issue for all sorcerers. Quarantined by the Divine Order. From the rips and bloodstains on this bear, you can conclude that you are not their first owner. Wonderful. Sore's color cannot be unequipped. Okay, the sturdy color hums faintly with energy. Powerful magic swirls within. And nothing else. This is our stats. Currently we have 10% fire and 10% poison resistance. There's our stats and so on. Okay, alright, that is just our... Okay. Uh, this is our spell bar. Basic attack. Bullhorns, okay, these are our spells. Dome of protection. Mm. Okay, and then there are those. Alright. Uh, that's what we're going to look at. Let's start looking around. We can interact with these. Oh, I don't even remember them strapping me down. Medical cabinet. Let's see what's in there. A knockdown arrowhead. Okay. A grinning skull. Not a very chatty fellow, are you? Well, seeing as it's a skull. Oh, I don't even remember them strapping me down. Okay. Oh, there's someone over here. This seems to be a table of stuff. Mm, Some cards. Well of knowledge this tome is. A small is tome. I'm going to read this. To Oops. Mm. We have too long presumed source as a virtuous part of civil society. Yet we need look no further into the past than the Source King's reign to understand the havoc such magics may wreak. One day another order must follow in the Source's hunter's footsteps. Source can must be muted. The new model of Source colors provided by Fredeman is providing most affection. Well of knowledge this tome is. Dallas is such a dear lending it to me. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna steal all this stuff. Sure, grab that as well. And the candle holder. Oh no, we turned that off. Strange jar. What is this? I'm gonna just pick it up, I guess. Row of books. What's in here? Nothing. No lesions. No trauma. All right, let's go talk to this girl. Magic. Woman. Ah, you're up. Fair. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. Really? We can trade with her? Huh. She has 13 no gold. No I'm gonna sell all her stuff back to her. That's hilarious. Sure, give me gold. No, I said accept the balance. Okay. This button adds gold to balance them out. So, and this offers all wares. No in the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. All right. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officers' quarters. Good to know. Okay, so now we can see that the tags that we picked, we can uh, choose different options for dialogue. You pull out the thing around your neck futilely, demand to know why she colored you. Give the Magister a quick salute and report for your duty on the good ship. Look around wearily and wonder what damnable dungeon you ended up in this time. Yeah. Dungeon? You have the gall to call my laboratory a dungeon? Oh, I'd be quite annoyed with you if you didn't look so honestly perplexed. Index fingers pressed to her lips. She pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. A narrator. My word. You do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Hmm. Oh, well. I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. 
In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits. And if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source for good. Sounds dangerous. You pull out the thing around your neck, demand to know why she called you. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. You recall great powers building inside you, the ones you commanded before you capture. Unleash them. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul like rain into the earth. Hmm. My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. There you have it, see? The collars function. It neuters you, of sorts. Rude. Makes you unable to cast source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. I don't like that you decided to choose what my life is for No known me, associates. In fact, he seemed okay. quite averse to We have been told to look for oh, Magister William at the stern of the ship in oh, order to, to do, be really? registered. Perhaps we can explore a little before we go to him. Now, I am terrible with boat terms. I don't know what stern is. Or like starboard or whatever. This door can be opened. Let's go check this barrel. Maybe there's something inside. Hey, two gold. We have a whole ten gold pieces. Amazing. Oh. There's... T Ooh. What the hell happened here? I hear a goat. Somewhere. Um... There's, there's been a murder here. Yeah, I noticed. A young magister stands pale and silent. Her knuckles whiten around her weapon as you pass. Okay, I'm not gonna do something, lady. I don't even have anything. I can cast spells, but these are apparently not sore spells. This one is probably the sore spell, because it, it needs source points. Dome of protection seems lame. What's behind high? the magister? A blooded mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. Avoid looking into the room. Nah, peer into the room and ask what happened. There's been a murder. No the shit. The sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Oh, well, yeah, I guess. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. Waters, like this woman inside here. Over there, that I can't see. Yeah, that one. Uh, ask if you could lend a hand. Ask if he knew the dead man. Pause always does. Ask if this thing happens often. Yeah. You surprised? You were one of them. You know what sorcerers are capable of. Whoever did this found a way around their collar and killed a man. Hmm. Small ones this time. Thank the gods. It seems as though there's a pattern to this blood feud. That can't be natural. Interesting. We'll find out who did it. One way or another. Okay. I'm gonna go in. Hope they don't attack me. Hi, Waters. Ugly sight, isn't it? Well, uh... Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. Inform her that she wasn't this man's protector, she was his captor. Well, you know, don't poke at a sleeping bear, I guess. Ask why she's letting you so close to the crime scene. For all she knows, you could be the killer, but I'm not. Oh, okay, yeah, she doesn't have anything. I'm just gonna leave. I have nothing to say. Now we can go in here. I still hear a goat somewhere. Did the murderer take him into this room? A jug. It's worth nothing. So this is pretty much what the series is going to be, so don't get too excited that it's going to be slam banging with action. Let's go upstairs. The is blocked. Oh. We need to find another way. Okay. We're gonna be walking and talking a lot. Action maybe this episode. Maybe next, I don't know. I forgot how to sing. I did. Losa. Nothing in there. Bedroll. Use this to rest when there are no enemies nearby. Oh, so that probably heals you. I can't move it? 
Ah! I'm gonna put this... I love that there's so many spaces. Oops. I'm gonna move this thing out of the way. I'm gonna need it, I think. Okay. Beast Gill. Classify this slop as food. I've seen more appetizing things coming out of plague stricken pigs. Wow, that's very rude. There's, Red there's Prince. nothing else I can make, Your Majesty. Your Turnips Majesty and water are all I was given. Ew. Okay, I don't blame you, I guess. I've never dined on I don't wanna just pick up a piece of rope. Nah. Can I put that down? Oh. Alright. <laughs> What's in here? Nothing. Anything else? Nah. All right. Hi. Ah, oh, there you are. Um, <coughs> husband. Husband. I'm a lizard. Well, okay. Granted, you know, let's not be racist. I guess things like that are fine in this world. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat-like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing. In fact, I'm deathly, deathly allergical. Allergical. I probably that probably means she can't sing. Play along and take her arm with a grin. Tell the children they must be mistaken. I'm a scoundrel, so I'm gonna go with it. Squint at a lot of them. Who's Lose? Say she must have you confused with someone else. Look at the passel of dirty kids and say they seem well enough like brats to you. That's rude. I'm gonna play along. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses wow. to be confused with anyone else. What a name. What? What's so funny? <laughs> That's a terrible name. Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Children can be sorcerers? Holy hell. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and get, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. <laughs> she turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Got to keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? I guess. Hi, what do you want? That's one angry-looking dog. Source hound. Say that is truth and I'll shake her hand. Losa, you presume? Ask if she couldn't find some more age-appropriate companions. <laughs> Say you're more concerned with her. Okay? You presume right. Ask if she knows anything about the murder that happened on board. Tell her she ought to have a look around with you. You can watch each other's backs. Sure. Nope. Trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. I guess. Tell us she ought to have a look Thanks, around with you. But I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. Wow, okay. You take care, though. I noticed I can't trade with her. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Whoa. Grayish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. Um. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. Okay, that one is a little bit on the cuckoo bin. I don't I like these guys. Let's go around this side. What's in here? Nothing. Okay. Hello. Sibyl. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. I wonder what she's doing? Rolling dice. No shit, Sherlock? Deciding fates. Oh. Laugh, can she root the future in cow angels as well? Frown, whose fate is she deciding? Let's not mock people just yet. Don't worry, honey. Make friends it first. Yours. Oh, thank goodness. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. If she can decide fates with dice, ask if she can read the future in cow entrails as well. Decide is probably best to take it. I don't wanna... I'm gonna try this. She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it too. Um, I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? Um. What are you trying to do anyway? 
I'm not sure how to feel about that. Yeah, sure. I'm a scoundrel, you know. Go right ahead. She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue, efficient like a cat grooming. Oh, God. Hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers. As everyone lay sleeping, you lay awake thinking of someone back home. A very special someone. Yes, my... Uh, sex toy. My flashlight. <laughs> you were reminiscing <laughs> about the things you used to do together. Oh, God, it really is a flashlight. Stare at the ground, embarrassed. You had quite forgotten about that. Admit white eye, that's exactly right. Snap at her. She doesn't know what she's even the hell she's talking about. <laughs> yeah. She pats you on the shoulder, consoling. Don't touch me, I'm a filthy, filthy perv. There, there, don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. Oh, God, this is gross. Yeah, let's uh, let's right. leave. I always knew you'd turn out rotten, Ben Mezd. Ben Mezd? Your kind always hung closest to our divine, like the wolves around a campfire. Keep well, talking. Oh. You've got this wolf on a leash now. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of the ship with it. Wow, that's very rude, Magister Victor. I'm busy watching for clues, sorcerer. Go take your sub story somewhere else. Mm hmm. Maybe I can talk to you. A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Sure. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this trampy fan. Hmm. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. Move closer, but clench your fists in case things go south. For some reason, your instincts cries out to salute to Ifan. For some reason, your instincts cries out to salute Ifan, so you do. Move closer to him. Sure. Ifan seems amused at the gesture, but he bats your arm down from the salute when the Magister sees what you're doing. You served? Tell him indeed you did. You served your empire. Ah, my word. Bravest warriors on Rivalon. Really? Served Lucian myself. Oh, okay. A long, long time ago now. Long before Source became reason to leash a man like a dog. Hmm. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug. Balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Everybody in the ship is so touchy. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy goblet in your general direction. Trade with him the either. Magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifa. A phlegmy goblet. A phlegmy goblet. Why is this game so descriptive? Ask Ifan why the Magister suspects him of murder. This doesn't seem like the optimal part of the ship to hang around. Take your leave. Ask Ifan. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Rude! Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. <laughs> That's your name from now on, Johnny Big Pants. Ask Ifan what he did to find himself at the mercy of a subordinate. Say that you're still curious about the murder. Did he do it? No. I mean, I guess he wouldn't tell the me. dead man. Finn, is it? I would no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame, sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. <laughs> Ask if and what he did to find himself. Ask if and there's anything but with your head at the joy. I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the ringmaster himself. So you'd like to meet Alexander? You'd show him exactly what you think of his bloody divine order. Telephone that you're one of Quincy's. You're not. You're not yeah. yeah. Easy now. I might think the same, but Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. <laughs> He's right there. What are you conspiring about over there? You, Lizard, what's your name? Oh, um, don't mind him. 
Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. Mm. And that bee is me. Name. Say that's, uh... Go. Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Away with you. At once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips, as he leans back against the wall. <laughs> I love this game. Did you put a knuckle in it? I'm trying to go to Ben Mason. Again, this is You're the place that this game's going to go at. To I hope you guys don't like mind. This is literally D and D on a PC. There's lots of bed rolls. There's a bucket, a helmet. Nothing else. That's just a stool. Beast. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. Mm, I can see them faintly. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? Boy, tell him you ought to think twice before addressing the like a child. Ask what you mean to be hearing. Wave his request when ask him what he knows. Yeah, wave his request when ask him what he knows about a murder. His eyes snap open. He looks at you and frowns. Murder? Ah, that's what they were going on and on about. I wouldn't know anything about it. I kill a man. He knows who done it. His daddy knows who done it. And the mayor knows who done it too. Okay, so not subtle. His eyes flutter shut, and he assumes his position of repose once more. Whether they catch me is another matter. <laughs> but I ain't one to hide my accomplishments. <laughs> wow. Also, this guy's got a hairy back. Holy crap. Uh, ask what you're meant to be hearing. The ship, of course. Quieten and listen to the sounds a of the ship. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates. The groaning of wood from floor to ceiling. The boom, crash and crackle of waves around you. Complaints from the sea itself. And? Tell him the ship is moaning like a sick man. Say the sea sounds angry, like it's trying to capsize the ship. Remark that your shipmates are chatty as gulls you can barely hear over the din. Eh. A common sort of sound, isn't it? Where there's talk, there's health. Ah, that's true. That's all you hear, though. Listen close. Close your eyes and try to let the ambient sounds of the ship fade away. Ask him what exactly he's supposed to tell him. When there now, just like that. Squeak. Aha! His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. Everybody is so touchy. Yeah, you heard that, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Ah, this is good news, boy. Good news. Um, ask what's got him so excited that was nothing more than a rat. No, you beautiful idiot. <laughs> that wasn't any rat. It was the wheel. Squeaks wheel. whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. How do you know that? Jerks it clockwise means we're heading east. What if we were heading south? If he jerks it clocks, clockwise, we're going west. Pardon my beard. That means if we've been traveling for, yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. I assume this guy is some form of sailor. Tell him you shouldn't talk like that about such a magnificent... What? Oh, burn my beard. Tell him that he should magnificent. Ask why he's so excited about reforging for a draw. You haven't heard anything good. Ah, so you have eyes as well as ears, eh? You'll go far, mate. <laughs> even here. Ask why he's so excited. Yeah, no, indeed, boy. But that ain't my final destination. Mm, hopefully, uh, same to everybody. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. Cock an eyebrow if he's catching an escape if he's hatching an escape plan you want in. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. Rude. As soon as the Who are you? Gets here, 
The Magisters are out for blood. You saw the body, didn't you? Big bruiser like you ought to be able to take them on. Um, I'm not gonna. That's enough now. The Red Prince. Well, well. What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. Um. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin. Jesus! The of inspecting your teeth. <laughs> what? Seriously? Everybody should get their hands off. Slap his hand away. My, we are fierce, aren't we? Not to worry. I'll soon remedy that. <laughs> I'm excited to see you try. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Never thought you'd end up Can you cook? Well, seeing as I'm an outlaw warrior, sure. I'm quite the wizard in the kitchen, a true chef. Sure. Ah, oh, music to my beleaguered stomach. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave, in short, uh, tailor? Probably not. Soldiers don't often like mend their own clothes, do they? Mm, nah, I c nah, I'm not like that level. Um. <laughs> yes, I can tell from your vagabond chic. A bag is as good as a shirt kind of style. <laughs> I shouldn't be getting my hopes up. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics. Nah. After? Rubbing your chin, you tell him you <laughs> the last time you bathed. What month is this? Just as I thought. That explains what's besieging my nostrils. Rude. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can cook, but you have the fashion sense of a monkey in a clown suit, and your personal hygiene reminds one of a carcass rotting in the sun. <laughs> that won't do at all, see? I'm sad to say I must deny you the opportunity to be my slave. Ever so sorry. Slave! What? Assume a sad face and tell him you're mightily disappointed. Stare at him blankly, he was looking for you to be his what now? Tell him you're half mine to punch him in the face. Yeah, this one. My slave, of course. Oh, oh, but I see. Yes, I suppose it must take some time for the full extent of my disheartening refusal to sink in. <coughs> Still, hone your skills, and one day you may just qualify for a position in a lesser household than mine. You keep dreaming, you hear? What I'll tell the hell? If you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. No, no, go over here. Hello. Forgive me, Kin. Were that I had more than gruel to serve, if I'd more than cornmeal and rotting roots, I'd concoct something more fitting. Fish, tomato, empty honey jar, and long branches. Okay. Meanwhile, the magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. <gasps> the Mm, this one is locked. Yeah, I checked that. How dare you classify this slop as food? I've seen more appetizing Ooh. things coming out of plague-stricken pigs. Okay, so a little chest icon There's means open, a hand means else take. Can make, your Majesty. Turnips and water are all I was given. Mm. Unacceptable. I've never dined on anything less than a dozen course dinner, and I don't intend to do away with the custom. Well, uh, there Fame. has been a murder, your Majesty. The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out, flicks a finger against one of your scales, and rubs his chin. Every single one of these people has touched me so far. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. Stare at him in shock and ask you what the hell you think he's doing. Ask whether the book is reading is any good. Ask who you're speaking to. Reach over and ruffle his hair. Sure, I'm gonna get touchy too. Hmm? What purpose did that serve? Was that a greeting? Was it... Oh. Oh dear. I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. 
How difficult. Yeah, you better. You have my apologies, lizard. Oh, you're very welcome. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. Look at him curiously, you're not sure he understands what's happening. You're bemused. Who is this guy? Ask about the book. Who is this guy? Ah yes. The niceties. My name is Fame. I am a scholar from well, I am a seeker of knowledge. That is enough. It is pleasurable to meet you. Ask it exactly. Seeking is a lot of knowledge in the world, not towards the book. Uh. Is there? Wherever do you keep it? <laughs> Certainly not in your books. I have been reading this one for several minutes, and I have yet to find a single insight into the mysteries of the universe. It's going to be a little harder than that. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. I know that feeling, actually. I've read a lot of like guides and programming guides and like classes and lectures and stuff that is way too detailed, but still doesn't really tell you anything. Tell me, what do you know of your, our world's history? Mm. Tell about the war between the Black Ring. It dwarfed everything that went before. Boast that the ancient empire has abided through all of history, even the face of the divine order. It stands strong. Talk about the most recent threat and how the Magisters have been fighting the void. Uh, yeah, let's take the lizard one. Oh, please. I have no interest in that. Your books are too full of it already. Really? No. I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? When I was younger, before I became an atheist, that was a question I asked as well. Where in the Bible does it tell you what happened before God? Uh, admit that some things are just uh, look at him incredulously. The gods are the forces they don't have a history. Ask why he's so curious about the gods. The elf's face freezes for just a second before he waves his hand dismissively. Oh, it's just one of my idle curiosities. We mortals do like to consider these things, do we not? Ha <laughs> ha, yes, we flesh and bone people that exist on your, I mean, our pla What is this guy? Is he some weirdo druggie? Now, please, run along. I have a world to decipher. Fine, whatever. Uh, Magister paid. What's going on over here? Wendigo. She looks an awful lot like that woman. From the, uh, from the cinematic. Just confiscated goods, display case. Um, and then... Magister paid. Here to register, sir. Good, good. Oh. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. You fearing okay so far? Tell him you've been through worse. Ask if he actually cares. Ask if he'd be fine colored like a dog. I've been through Trust worse. Trust me, with Bishop Alexander in charge, things will get a lot better from here on out. He's god walking, you know. All right. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. Ah, now it's open. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop here, just for the if something happens. I'm going to save, create a new save called YouTube. Yeah, I've played quite a lot of this game. Like, at least two hours, but completely different characters. I, and I also, like, kind of skipped through a lot of it. Um, I'm taking my time for the series, for your sake as well. So yeah, guys, I appreciate a like and a comment. And I hope you click that sub button if you want to see some more. These are going to come out one a day until we're done with it. Or until I get sick. But I doubt I will. This game is awesome. Guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye for now.